Henry VIII was the second king of the Tudor house that reigned over England between 1509 and 1547. He was son of Henry VII, who had killed the previous king of England, Richard III of the House of York, in the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, putting an end to the War of the Roses that had lasted roughly 30 years. Despite eventually succeeding his father to the throne, Henry wasn't the heir apparent. But when his brother died in 1502, he became the Prince of Wales, and a few years later, in 1509, got to the throne after his father's death. When he was young, he was an agreeable and likeable prince, liking the arts and sciences, tall, strong, and of athletic build, being very attractive for the women of those days. He showed himself as strong and virile, and wanted everybody to acknowledge he was the best and the most powerful. Despite this big ego, in private, he felt tormented by the fears and the potential threats, and he was terribly insecure in matters regarding his right to the throne, since his royal blood ancestry was originally illegitimate, Beaufort. Hence, his continued wariness against the noble-blooded aristocracy. This can be appreciated already in his first acts as a king, facing the risk of potential complots soon after his claiming the throne in June 1509, he ordered the detention and execution of the two councillors closest to his father and most powerful, and therefore most dangerous, Richard Empson and Edmund Dudley. At the same time though, he made a brilliant move, proclaiming a general royal pardon in the country, achieving great popularity and support from his subjects. The two detentions were followed by more in the next few years though, and fear took hold of the court. Henry had married, a few days before being crowned, with Catherine of Aragon, to whom he showed genuine affection. She was the daughter of Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon, the Catholic kings of Spain, as well as the widow of his own brother Arthur. After a year and a half of marriage, they had a baby boy in 1510, but he would die after a few weeks. This is something that would happen repeatedly in the next years, since Catherine lost five babies. As time passed, having a male heir became an obsession for Henry. Before this came to happen though, Henry had his sights in France, and in an alliance with the King Ferdinand of Aragon, that was already embroiled in wars in the Italian peninsula against the French Holy League, pursued his dreams for a time, and in 1512, launched a fleet of light, powerful, and maneuverable ships against France. In this period, Henry behaved as a devout spouse, and Catherine was a very prepared and intelligent woman. Henry showed his trust in her, leaving her in charge of the government in his absence. The Scots, taking advantage of the absence of the king, invaded the north of England, but Catherine prepared the defense and showed up with the army, beating the Scots in the Battle of Flodden, 1513. In France, Henry had beaten the French shortly before, in the Battle of Spurs. But in 1514, he left the campaign incomplete due to lack of funds. But even if at the beginning, Henry and Catherine formed a happy marriage, and both suffered together the loss of their offspring, time and these losses made Henry think that Catherine would never give him a son and Henry's sorrows turned into dissatisfaction and resentment that made him grow distant with her and to look for other women. Already in 1519, he had a son with Elizabeth Blount, and in 1527, having met Anne Boleyn, he started thinking of getting, from the Catholic Church, a declaration of nullity of his marriage. What Henry wasn't banking on was on Catherine refusing to accept that approach to fight for the rights of their daughter, Princess Mary, the only daughter of the marriage that was born in 1516. Having a male heir was not Henry's only obsession. The constant vigilance over the nobleman through a network of informants was the other. The king would accuse of treason and consequently have killed anybody he thought meant a threat. For example, the Duke of Suffolk, killed in 1513, or the Duke of Buckingham, killed in 1521. In 1526, he met Anne Boleyn, who didn't want to be the king's pastime, but to become queen, 
and wouldn't agree to be with him unless he promised to marry her. This is an important detail. Since she managed that he thought of her as a wife, instead of as a courtesan lover, and this sparked in Henry the idea of the annulment. He also found in the annulment the solution to get the male heir he wanted. The person in charge of obtaining the decree of nullity was Wolsey, main advisor of Henry, a man of humble origins that had been raised to the position of cardinal and lord chancellor. But it was an impossible task. On one hand, the church would never issue the decree of nullity of a marriage after more than 20 years, and on the other hand, Catherine was the aunt of the Emperor Charles, first of Spain and fifth of Germany, and Rome wouldn't upset him for a whim of Henry. Wolsey lost the royal favour with this failure and was accused of treason, as was the norm. He died in 1530, but he didn't die executed. Instead, he died en route to London, of the sustained funk of having been summoned to answer charges of treason. Facing the refusal of the church, Anne, that had Protestant ideas from France, thought that the king was the ruler of both the state and the church in his kingdom, subject to God only, and didn't need the papal approval to divorce Catherine. Henry thought it was a great idea and broke with Rome, making it public in the parliament in 1531. Queen Catherine was sent away from the court and Anne took charge of her quarters. In 1534, he was appointed head of the church, act of supremacy, with a clear message. Whoever opposed it would be accused of high treason, which implied a death penalty. It's important to note that even when in public, he would show himself as having broken with the Pope in Rome. In private, he kept all the dogmas of the Catholic faith and would attend mass on a daily basis. Anne married Henry in 1533, already expecting a son, but it turned out to be a girl, the future Elizabeth I. This meant a backlash for him. Not only he didn't manage a male heir, but many showed dislike with his decisions, breaking with Rome, which hadn't been a religiously motivated move, but rather a political and economic one, wasn't to the liking of many. And those who wouldn't accept the king as the head of the church, like Thomas More and John Fisher, would be executed in a cruel manner making the king very unpopular. In January 1536, during some games, Henry had an accident that threatened his life. This had severe consequences. It kept him away from exercising for the rest of his life, which had a bad effect in his physique and his character. The fright of the accident also caused Anne, already worried about her losing the favor of the king, to suffer the miscarriage of her baby boy. Thomas Cromwell, the first minister since 1532, and Anne's rival for royal favour, brought up an accusation that was very convenient for Henry, who was already in affairs with Jane Seymour. Anne was accused of incest and conspiracy and therefore executed on the 19th of May 1536. That very same month, Henry married again, the 30th of May 1536. Thomas Cromwell wouldn't have a nice ending either, and was also executed in 1540. But before that, between 1534 and 1535, a survey of the finances of the church had been conducted, Valor Ecclesiasticus. In March 1536, the parliament disbanded the religious institutions, and their properties and revenues were transferred to the king, greatly increasing his income. The cultural loss was immense, not to mention the executions that were carried out too. Between 1535 and 1539, around 20,000 monks and nuns became homeless, and 563 monasteries were destroyed. This shook the whole country, as the monasteries were spiritual centers of the community, but also social and economic centers. Henry sold these ecclesiastical lands to a new well-off class with means, successful merchants and farmers, that weren't noble. But these lands allowed them to climb socially, becoming stronger and creating a new social class between the populace and the nobility. To create this powerful class that was in favor of the king was brilliant for Henry. This class, known as the gentry, would run the House of Commons until well into the 19th century. Henry had a male heir with Jane Seymour in 1537. The future Edward VI 
but she died a few days after giving birth. In that same year, the Pilgrimage of Grace, a popular uprising in the north, was suffocated with the execution of the rebel leaders. This marked an important change in Henry's reign. It wasn't just those in the court, but from then on, nobody in England, not even in the north, could escape the king. In these years, Henry started getting fatter, suffering strong migraines, and feeling sick with terrible wounds in his legs that prevented him from walking, and that would be kept open to ooze the pus, which would smell quite badly. He would hardly move, would be anxious, depressive, and suspecting everyone, but still wanted to look like a virile and powerful king, and kept looking for wives. The next one was Anne of Cleves, a young German noblewoman and Protestant that Henry married in 1530. But the marriage was a fiasco from the beginning, and he divorced soon to marry Catherine Howard. This marriage didn't last long either, and in February 1542, Catherine was beheaded for adultery and treason. Despite these upsetting results, he'd marry again in 1543 with Catherine Parr, his sixth and his last wife. Henry felt again the pang for conquest, and in the context of the Italian wars of the Emperor Charles V against Francis I of France and Suleiman the Magnificent in 1542-1546, he planned another invasion of France. In 1544, he had to be put on horseback with a pulley system to take part in the siege of a small city of Boulogne that fell under the control of the English, and his legs were so swollen that they had to cut his armor to remove it. Despite this victory, the kingdom was in bankruptcy, and in 1546 signed with France the Peace of Ardres, agreeing Boulogne to be returned to France after eight years, in return for two million of French ecus. Henry never quite achieved the relevance in European politics that he would have liked. His health kept deteriorating. He died on the 28th of January 1547, 55 years old formally excommunicated, but without having renounced the dogmas of the Catholic faith, he had opened the door to the Protestant Reformation that was definitely imposed during the reigns of his children Edward VI and Elizabeth I.